All right. Good Nerf Shabbos. Good night, everybody. It, it pains me that I have to talk about this again. But, you know, this is how I operate. I'm not going to, you know, just type on Twitter. I'm going to say what's on my mind. And some people were saying that, you know, I say in English what everybody says in Yiddish, and it's fear-mongering and this and that. And the thing is, it's not just me. You know, Glenn Beck is not a Hasidic Jew. He's a Mormon. But he, you know, he sees the same exact things that we see going on. You know, and, and this battle is a battle between those who believe that, in, believe in freedom and people who don't believe in freedom. That's basically it. That's what it comes down to, is that the progressive left, and, and in the old days, the progressive right, you know, there was such a thing as a progressive right when they had the, the prohibition and all this stuff. None of this works. You cannot force people to follow what you want just because you want it. We have a free market. We have a free country. And that's how America works. And to say that, you know, uh, you know you're going to force all the Hasidic Jews to, to um, you know, to teach English exactly how you want it to be taught. It's, it doesn't work that way. That's, this, this is America. This isn't communist China. This isn't Cuba. This isn't Israel. This isn't North Korea. This is America. And you cannot get away with forcing people to, to do things the way you want it to be done. And just the same, the Hasidic Jews, they can't make laws to say, you know, everybody in America has to, to wear a beard and pays and a strimal and, and the women have to cover their hair and wear long skirts. And neither do they want to. They want to live their lives. And if there are people in the community who want to leave, they, get, they leave. And that's just how it is. And it's a free country. And you can get up and leave. And yes, I, you know parents who are raising their children in a certain way, they don't necessarily want to give them tools to choose a different way that they think is harmful both to their body and soul and so they try to shelter their kids and they don't want to teach them everything that gets taught in the public school but they do teach English I taught in Satmar, we teach they teach English, math spelling, reading and in the reading books they cover math and science they fulfill what the obligations are to the state. You know, like, like the Christians would say, they render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. But the rest of the time, they want to be learning Torah. They want to be doing mitzvahs. They're trying to raise their children according to their culture and their religion. And that's, that's the beauty of America. The Muslims can raise their children to be Muslims. Can you imagine, you know, like if what, the equivalent of what Yafed wants would be like to say, you know, uh, you have to, that, you know, all Muslim schools and all Jewish schools have to teach Christianity. You know, it's, it's, it's like the same thing. It's, it's ridiculous. That's not how these things work. I mean, there's reasons why parents choose to send their children to private schools and not to public schools. And those parents who were complaining, you are free to send your kids to public schools. I mean, there was there was a square guy who sent his kids to public school. You know, all of this story that this guy wrote this big letter, and uh, no, that's not how America works. You know, you know how America works. If you really cared about education and not about indoctrination and forcing people to follow your will using government fiat, what you would do, Yafed, is you would open your own yeshiva and compete in the free market. But you know that there's no market for what you're selling. So you want the government to force people to, to, to buy what you're selling instead of, because you don't care about freedom, you don't care about people, you care about control. I mean, the fact that Nick Muster came out and said that he wants to run for Congress and get rid of the RLUIPA law, 
which was a bipartisan law, was signed into law by Bill Clinton. He wasn't, you know, some Bible thumper, you know. I mean, and to say that this is a damaging law, a law that gives prisoners the right to ask for religious freedoms, the law that says that religious institutions should be taught, should be treated just the same as secular institutions? I, I, are you serious? You want to get rid of that? Like, what on earth? What are you smoking? What is wrong with you? I, why would anybody be opposed to that? Unless you just absolutely hate religion and you want to stamp out religion in America. And he, and he openly said that the Amish are wrong too. What kind of thing is that to say? What is it your business what the Amish do? And, what, and you're not a Hasidic Jew anymore. It's none of your business what the Hasidic Jews do. But the thing is, it's this mindset, this left-wing progressive mindset. It's that same mindset where you have, you know, left-wing Jews who don't care about Shabbos, don't care, but all of a sudden they're offended because in the Catholic Missal they have something about the pernicious Jews. And that, that offends them. What is it your business what the Catholics have in their liturgy? The same thing. They're so offended because because the Mormons are posthumously uh, baptizing Holocaust uh, victims. What's it your business? If you don't believe it, you think it's silly, why do you care what they do? It doesn't, it doesn't, if you think, if you don't believe in it, what does that hurt you what the Mormons are doing? But it's that same mentality of, we can't let people practice their religion. This left-wing progressive mentality of pretty much wiping out religion. It goes to Marx where it's about the opiate of the masses, that religion is the opiate of the masses. This man, Nick Muster, hates religion. It's not about education. It's about wiping out religion. And, it, and, there's, and it's an endless slippery slope. We all know. I'm not, it's not an exaggeration. We all know what's coming next. We see what's going on in England. This, you know, there's a reason why we fought a revolution against England. You know, we're not England. Let England be England. I don't forgive England to be England, and I don't forgive the Catholics for being Catholics, and I don't forgive the the, uh, the the Mormons for being Mormons. I don't forgive the the, the 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 Muslims for being Muslims. Let them be. Let them be. Leave them alone. It's a free country. They're not hurting anybody else. They're not hurting you. They're not telling you what to do. Don't tell them what to do. That's what this is all about. It's all about this left-wing mentality. I mean, one of the one of the commentators here, he said, he said like this. He said, you know, some some parents are stupid. What the? Who do you think you are to say that? And I and I mean it in a respectful way. And you're always respectful to me, but I'm serious. It's this mentality of believing we know better than you. You know, it's this Woodrow Wilson, Elizabeth Warren mentality that we know better than everybody else. You know, I'm Woodrow Wilson. I was the president of, of Princeton University. I have a PhD. I should be the king of America. We, you know, I mean, that's that's the Woodrow Wilson mentality. That's the Barack Obama mentality. That's the that's the, the Elizabeth Warren mentality that, you know, we're these great professors and we know better than everybody else and we should, and, and you know, you, you, you as a parent, you don't have a right to, to decide these things. And if we don't protect the rights of the small minorities like the Hasidic Jews who are an insignificant minority in America, they're, they're a blip on the, on the map, they're nothing. Why do they get so much attention? Leave them alone. Lass them up. Lass them gain. Leave them alone. Who cares what they do? They're not. They're not sending missionaries to make everybody else join them. You know, Chabad. They want Jews to join them, but they, even then, they're not. They're not making the the Bali Chuva be like the the Crown Heights ever who don't have English in their schools. And even in Crown Heights, they and I like the Crown Heights approach. Meaning in Crown Heights, you have a choice. 
You want to send your kid to a school with English? You send it. You have two different schools to go to. And do I think that type of freedom should be available in Williamsburg and so forth? Yeah, if that's what people are looking for. You know, and the, but the thing is, you have that freedom. I mean, there's a reason why. Like I remember when I was a Bacher, you know, all the all the best are mentioned. You know, all all the the Chushim Balabatim. You know, if they if they had a little bit more money, they didn't send their kids to Sapmer. They sent their even they were Sapmer Chasidim. They davened in Sapmer. They send their kids to Krasna or Pupa or Spinka or or you know one of these. Why? Because they knew it was a smaller school. Maybe they had to pay a little bit more for the tuition, and they had the money, and the and the, the kids are going to get more attention now that. I would even say, Baruch Hashem, Sapmer split into two, two, two camps. There's some healthy competition in the in the free market, and the Sapmer schools are better than they were 20 years ago. I'm, and I'm not talking about English or anything else. I'm talking about what the parents were looking for, because it, and 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 the thing is, is more and more in the Hasidic community, they're not looking for the English. Meaning in Bab of where everybody spoke English and everything, now they're becoming more and more Hasidic because that's what the community is going through. I mean, people are so upset. Why Why do the Haredish newspapers, um, why they don't have pictures of women, right? And people are so... Well, it's like, you know why? Because there's a free market. And in the free market, there are a lot of people who want to buy these newspapers that don't have pictures of women. Now, I'm not saying that all those people who buy the Hamadiyya only buy newspapers that don't have pictures of women, but there is a certain faction that's like this. You know, especially Hamadiyya, it's run by Gera Hasidim, you know, they're very strict about these things. And that's their thing. <coughs> you know, so, it's, 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 you know, that that's just the way it is, you know. I mean, if in the free market, that's how it operates, and there's nothing wrong. I don't have a problem with that. I'm not, you know, I'm not threatened by people being frumer than me. I'm not threatened by. It doesn't bother me that that you know that there, you know, it does, and it also doesn't bother me that there's a Naturi Karta or Lev Tor or all these other groups, even though I might disagree with certain things that they do or whatever. But the, let, let, let them be. You know, I remember in Yushalayim it was so beautiful. You know, it's Hashanah Rabbah this week, and I would go Hashanah Rabbah to this one Yid, he's a, 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 a Rosh Koilil, American guy, he, he became a big Tamachach in the Rosh Koilil, and he's a Slanim Rechasset from the Vasa Slanim, from the Yushalayim Slanim, that are, they speak of Rit, they're more pro Zionist, you know. And who was his guest? Uh, for, for the, the, the Sudas on, on Shana Rabbah was, was someone who I knew we worked together was was a, a, a also American boy from from, from uh, Washington Heights I don't have to mention his name but he, he as Gavorna uh, he, he grew up Mount Orthodox and he became he became in the Torah Karta right and and they're good friends they disagree about Israel, Zionism, certain things, but they can still get along, you know. And they and, and and you know, I mean, today I'll tell you what happened to me today at work. Here I am. I'm, I I have some authority at work over inmates for sure, you know. And there's a guy, an inmate, and he tells me his mother's Jewish. He always wears a yarmulke. He likes to put on fill and he likes to do mitzvahs. But he also he, he believes in Isaiah. And uh, he he, be he believes in, in Yashka, He believes in Jesus. And uh, you know, and he he was like pulling the whole. And I, I, you know, he's been there a few months. I know him already, and I and he's pulling a whole missionary shtick on me, trying to convert me. And I was very nice to him. And I and I was like, you know what? I was like, I I have no. I have no uh, agenda to make you believe what I believe. All I want to do, perhaps, is just explain to you why I believe what I believe. You know, and then he went on to say, well, you know, 
the eyes of the Jews are closed. They don't. They're not able to see the truth about about Isa Ish. And I was like, but you're Jewish. And he's like, well, I guess, I guess you know this. I mean, he he believes in a lot of like uh, Calvinist theology and things. So like, you know, certain people are cult. Certain people are predestined to you know. And you know, it's like, and I and I'm and I, I, I you know, I'm just like. I can still sit and talk to him, and a lot of people lost patience. Like all the Christians lost patience with this guy, and I'm like, I didn't lose patience with him. You know, he was like losing patience with me, but I'm like, <laughs> you know, and, and you know, and, and my whole thing to him was like, you know, I, I, I don't forget again when I talk about someone like Michael Brown. I used to call Michael Brown on his radio show, and and and, and chepper him a little bit. And, uh, and and the whole agenda I have when it comes to Michael Brown is that he should recognize that his religion is not Judaism, that it's Christianity. Meaning to say, you know, uh, there's a certain point where Islam is not Christianity and not Judaism, and we know that. And according to a lot of Christians, there's a certain point where LDS, where the Mormon church, they don't consider them Christians. And, and so the same thing, your religion is no longer Judaism once you cross this certain point. Now the question is, what what point is it that you have to cross that's no longer Judaism? And there's, you can have a whole intellectual and scholarly discussion on that question because it's not as black and white as I would say 99% of people would believe. Doesn't, and, and meaning, what point is does false doctrine become heresy? You know that would be that would be the way I would approach this question. Meaning, there's a difference between something that's a false doctrine and something that's heresy. You know, one could perhaps believe a false doctrine and still not be a heretic. And then there's a certain. I'm talking from a halachic standpoint in, within the realms of Judaism. But as an American, I don't care. You go do whatever you want. You believe whatever you want. All these people who are who are allegedly, I don't even believe it, any of it's true, but they're crying, oh, the government has to come save us from these Hopper schools that don't teach enough English and this and that. Go to a different school. For all I care, go convert to Buddhism. I don't care. I, you know? I, 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 I don't need you. You know, you, there's no... You know, I don't have this Lubavitch mentality that, you know, if one of one of the Oisius in the Sefer Torah is missing, then the whole Sefer Torah is possible. I mean, I know in Halacha, when it, we're talking about Oisius in the Sefer Torah, that's the Halacha. But I'm talking about how they see that the, the whole Klal Yisrael, if one is missing, the whole, the whole Klal Yisrael is possible. No, come on. Uh, Rav Yitzhak de Ma'ako said that there are people who were born Jewish who don't have a Yiddish in Shama, and, and there are people who are born not Jewish, who have a Yiddish in Shama. That's what, and, and he was a Rishon, he was a Talmud of the Ramban, he was a Makubu. You know, people always say, like, this whole idea of a Jewish Neshama, it's a Kabbalistic idea, and the and the rationalists don't don't have that idea. And it's like, the Kabbalists are a lot closer to the rationalists than what Chabad would have you believe. But I don't forget Chabad, Chabad, go be Chabad. The same thing, Chabad, they might have a lot of false doctrines, but they're not heretics, except for the Berenuniks, right? So it's the same Misa there. And, and, and uh, you know, although there's a Chalukei Deus with that too, you know. I know Menashe Klein, Zechut Sa'ak HaVrochel, I remember I, I went to him a few times, and he uh, he held it that even uh, Stam, it's 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 it's, it's Kfir. And Eilu Velu Devil Kim I don't know what else to say, you know, like, you know, you, you, you want to listen to, to, to Rabbi Menashe Klein, or you want to listen to... Um, uh, the the Shiva from from Ner Yisrael, who definitely disagrees with the Mishachis Chabad, but the, but he says they're not they're not uh, they're, they're not uh, Apikarsim, you know, Rabbi Feldman. There's still uh, it's still a, a silly thing to believe, but it's not you know it's a false doctrine, but it's not it's not queer, it's not it's not heresy. Um. I don't. I don't know what else to say here, but I'm just saying. I I can 
I can live with the fact, and even if people are heretics, so I can, I can also be friends with a reform rabbi. I don't, I don't have any problems. You know, I am, I'm happy to welcome, you know, anybody. You, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I'm nice to everybody. You know, I'll sit with people who I disagree with. You know, the whole story with, with Ellen and George Bush. You know, that whole story there. You know, I don't even like to watch football, but I'd, I'd sit with with Ellen and with George Bush. You know, and I and I and I boycotted a ABC forever after after the whole mice with Ellen and 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 you know and I, and I'm like Glenn Beck with Disney that like I'm boycotting Disney except when it's Star Wars. You know, and now Disney bought Fox, so it's like so except for the Simpsons also. But you you know, I, I don't I, I, I don't know. So um, this is this is the whole story. What we got here, uh, what, 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 you know, let people be. Let everybody be what they want to be. You know, and everybody has the right to. You know, if you don't like what's going on in your school, you go to a different school. You, it's a private school. Nobody's forcing you to go to this private school. As much as you're talking about peer pressure and this and that, be a man. Grow up. If you you know, if if you don't like something, so you get up and leave. You don't sit there and whine. Oh, this school is horrible, but yet you're still paying tuition to send your kids to a school that's so horrible. Oh, because 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 my family's gonna pick up I me. Mean, what are you talking about? I, I mean, I know real Haimish or Satmich Sinim, and the one brother is a Vishnitzer, and the one, and they, they come from the real Satmara homes, you know, from, from, from the, from the Choshev's to Satmara homes, and the one, one brother's a Satmara, one brother's a Vishnitzer, and one brother's a Babavar, and they all get along, and, and, and it's fine, and, and that's how it's supposed to be. You know, it's this mentality that everybody has to be the same. That's the sickness. That's, you know, that is the, you know, I know Rabbi Bart Sadok always talks about um, fundamentalism. But there's such a thing as secular fundamentalism also. That's communism. Meaning, if you, you can be secular and be a libertarian, meaning to say, you do your thing, I do my thing. You know, it's like, you know, my wife was telling me about, she read some blog somewhere with questions and answers, you know, advice column. This this lady, she said, you know, I I, I, I raised my daughter to be to be an atheist, and she's going to uh, she's going to the the Quaker meeting house. What, what what should I do? And and like you know, somebody somebody said to her to this to this mother, you know, is this about you or is this about her? And you know, and then, and as religions go. You know, to go to a Quaker meeting house and sit there and, and be quiet and, and maybe play guitar or, or, you know, just do nothing or whatever they do, you know, or, or just talk or, you know, it's, it's, it's not a very structured, organized religion. It's a pretty, you know, chilled out place, you know, society of friends. Uh, it, 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 what does it hurt you that, she, that she's going to this place and, and you know, she's, she gets something out of it, you know? You know, and, and it's the same thing, you know, and, and if if a kid, you know, so then the, the, the these, these left-wing progressives, like, we got to protect these kids from their parents. You know, that's what this is all about. Like, what are you talking about? Like, the, the, the kids aren't, they're not, the parents aren't abusing the kids because they're raising them in a, in a different culture than yours. And, and essentially, that's, that, this whole idea, it's like, it's, it's imperialistic. I mean, would you go to, to some some tribe in the Amazon and tell them, you know, you, you, you have to use an electric toothbrush? You know, that, that's what this is. And, and, you know, and like, and even if you grew up in that tribe and you left the tribe, leave the tribe alone. Let the tribe be the tribe. And you, and you go somewhere else. You, you didn't find something better than what the tribe has. The tribe is very happy with what they have. You're going to destroy it. It's the story like, I think, uh, Tolstoy wrote, but it's, there's a Hasidic story like this too. You know, like, uh, I mean, Tolstoy told it, you know, with a, with a priest, you know, with a, with a Russian Orthodox priest, but like the, 
I think, you know, but there's a Hasidic story like this too, you know, like, you know, the, the, these, well, I'll tell the Jewish version because I'm Jewish, you know, I'm a little ethnocentric here, you know, but like it, the, uh, this, you know, this guy, you know, he finds, uh, He's he's a big time chacham, you know. He's he's a he's a scholar, and he finds this very simple pious Jew somewhere who doesn't really know how to daven, and so like he, I think like the, maybe one version of the story is like he just reads through the whole sitter, you know, every day he reads Alanisim and, and Yalav Yavo and everything, and like and he reads the whole sitter cover to cover, even though you know he's he's reading three musafs every day. You know he's reading. He, you know he's reading a Shabbos Musaf every day, and a and he's he, and, and and the and the Rish Chodesh Musaf every day, and the Shlosh Ragolim Musaf. And and when he's reading the Shlosh Ragolim, he reads all the different Yom Tovim every day. He doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know how to daven. He just not, and he doesn't understand anything he's reading. But he does it with such piety and sincerity. And then this Talmud Chacham comes and he gives him all kinds of notes and a little piece of paper in the sitter to show him how he should really daven. And the, and the uh, this 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 guy he like lives on an island, and uh, and so the 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 uh, the, the Talmud Chacham he leaves on the boat and he goes he goes back home, and the uh, and the simple Jew he's there and his uh, and, and and the um, all the little notes they all fly away, and and so uh, so so the, this guy. Who, who didn't know how to daven, and he just got taught how to daven, and he runs to, to the Talmud Chacham, so he, as he's going, he's walking on the water, right, to, uh, to, to, to go and, and, and get the answer back from this, from this know-it-all Talmud Chacham, right? Do, do, do you understand the nimshal here? You know, there are enough people that are happy in their Hasidic community, just how it is, and left happy people who are happy in their Muslim community or in their Amish community, whatever community, they don't need some know-it-all to come and tell them, oh, you're doing everything wrong. These guys are going to walk on water to run after you to try to find out when, 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 they're, uh, when, 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 when the little pieces of paper fly away because they're really holier than you. And, and, and not everything's about being a know-it-all. Thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. Have a good Shabbos. Good Yontiv. Rachman, Yakum, Lonu, Sukas, Dovid, and your followers, right?